Hey, everybody, how are we doing? So, uh, a couple days ago, uh, the moderator, MLG Peanut, created a list of his suggestions for the game. And he sent it to Laz. Laz saw it, and he's like, hey, this is a good idea. And then Laz told him to go get community suggestions. And so this is his refined list that is chock full of his suggestions and community suggestions. And so today we're going to take a look at what all of these suggestions are, because there's like 52 of them. There's a crazy amount. And so, yeah, we're going to see what potential features are going to hit the game in the near future. Hopefully some of these are going to be accepted. These ideas are like, there are a wide range of decent and shit, and there's a lot in between. So let's get into it, right? Uh, first off, rotation key for building. Right, so this is like how you do it with uh, conventional items like spit roasts and campfires and shit. This is like rotating the house props on the like snap grid thing. Um, yeah, I think that'd be a pretty good idea. The coaster's already supposed to do that though, so it would be a little redundant. I'm not sure if that would add too much to the game because the coaster is supposed to do that anyways. Um, adding more NPCs to existing towns. Yeah, that's a pretty good idea. I'd be worried about like server load. And then, obviously, writing all the dialogue for those NPCs would be cancerous. Unless you just don't give them any dialogue at all, which could also work. <laughs> wonder how spooky the game would feel if you're in an empty server and it's only populated by NPCs. That'd be wild. Um, adding NPCs that carry crates to the warehouses and to the docks and shit in the towns. So that's essentially describing crate running visually to new players. That's a very good idea. I think that'd be awesome. Uh, I'd love to see something like that. A show-don't-tell type thing. That'd be really cool. Uh, colonists spawn. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. So, essentially have Kalos spawn in the, like, inns. So, like, here. And then instead of the town centers. Not a huge fan of that idea, because it means dueling is going to be, like, annoying and cumbersome. And you don't spawn back in the dueling arena. Um, so, it's cool for immersion, but I'm not sure about that idea. Canto main, uh, SLC warehouse and Canto main. That's a pretty good idea. Um, I would be worried though. It makes it pretty easy to farm because Canto main is so fucking empty. Uh, yeah, not sure about the validity of that part though. Improving NPCs. Uh, yeah, okay. Allow them to mine. That's a pretty good idea, right? Uh, George Faustin demonstrating mining so new players that follow him can go see how the fuck that works. That's actually a very good idea. Um, I think all the NPCs that do that kind of shit should probably do that kind of shit. That's a good idea. Uh, reworking bed rules and safe zones. Uh, 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 disassemble, like, bed rules and shit in safe zone, no matter who owns them. That's a pretty good idea to uh, discourage all the shitty houses and things that are built in safe zone because of, like, weird bugs and shit. That's a pretty good idea, just having anyone be able to edit them. I like that idea. The only problem, obviously, is uh, display things, so like market stands. <clears throat> if you've got a market stand, obviously you need an exception. You shouldn't have people just using your market stand and stealing items off it at a whim. Duh. You shouldn't have people disassembling that. Uh, then we've got a uh, illegal trader, and then adding chances in for him to have like rare items. And this is the first idea I had to double take, because this is a really bad idea, right? Because look at these percentages. They're small on their own, but let's say we add them all up. This is like 1.5, 2, da, da, da. It's like, I don't know, like 12, 13, maybe like up to 15% here. And so that's, you know, what? One in seven, one in eight times you run into Johannes, he's got one of these uber rare items. So I'm not a huge fan of that. That is way too farmable. Uh, I don't think there should be any chances of this at all. Like, this is this is essentially diamond mining, but with much better odds and with much better items. Yeah, not a fan of this system. People would just farm him relentlessly. You know, you'd just go to one of his six spawns on Rupert and then just server hop for hours, and you'd get these items, you know? And it wouldn't be super common, but these items are so rare that it doesn't even matter. So not a huge fan of that. Uh, climbing, fixing climbing ice walls. It, it is kind of broken. Uh, I don't know how you'd fix that. It's just the weird way you sort of disconnect from the wall when you turn in any direction. That's not straightforward. And then obviously you get stopped up by strange surfaces sometimes. It does need a fix. I've got no idea how you fix it, though. Combat logging. Um, da -da 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 -da. I've never seen this bug happen. If this happens, that's not good. 
it needs to be fixed, obviously. I'd imagine it's something to do with uh, being jailed, though. I doubt it's the combat logging itself, because this this visual I've only ever seen when there's a jail bug of some kind. Uh, or you just straight up jailed. <laughs> yeah, who knows. <coughs> We've got allow people to put in like siege ladders and shit and fortification buildings in the flag areas. Um, not a great idea in my opinion because the flag fortifications are a lot weaker to cannons in those areas, and as a trade-off, you can't put down any sort of siege ladders or other fortifications in those areas. Whereas houses are very strong against cannons, but you can climb them with fortifications like siege ladders. So it's kind of a tit-for-tat thing. I'm not entirely sure making forts just that much easier to raid with siege ladders and shit is a good idea. Uh, <laughs> Reenacting, or like re-enabling the native team? Uh, it's a good idea, I think, but obviously native team needs to be more fleshed out. I think if Native was reenacted in the modern day, people would go to Native and then just kind of get bored after a week because it's such a vapid, shallow team. So they'd need to put in a lot more gameplay before they opened it if they wanted to keep up a consistent group of Natives. Yeah. Uh, bounties. Um, mm -hmm. Fixing Jail. I, I think Jail does need to be fixed. Uh, honestly, I think Jail needs to be uh, longer. I think five-minute jail sentences sound like a good thing. Uh, yep, I, I think jail needs to be fixed. I don't think player reputation is a very good idea, though, uh, just because of so many locations on Northwind being super-duper specific for, like, certain things. Like, certain shops are, like, the be-all end-all of certain crafts, you know? Like, imagine getting locked out of Smithtown or something like that on Cantomain. I know a lot of you don't even know that exists, but that's where all alloys are smelted, and if you're locked out of that town, God, you couldn't make any alloys, you know? Or St. Paul, right? You know, think about the shit people use St. Paul for. You can't you can't do any of that. Although a lot of St. Paul's functionality is shared by Babel and Cantomain, so it depends. But there's just certain places that you can only go to one place to get things done, and if you're locked out of that, that's pretty cancerous. Safes. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> Special lock, I don't think that's... I, I, very simple solution to safes, just make them 50 space. Safes have way too much space. People can store shit tons of bands and ammo in safes, and then all of their stuff on weapon mounts, and so you can have a bunch of unlootable sets in your house, which is pretty overpowered. I think you need to limit weapon stands, <laughs> and you need to limit safe inventory. There should be like three or four weapon stands in a house max, and safes need like 50 space inside them. And that's the only way, realistically, to stop people from just stocking their house with unlootable items. Bedrolls! Um, <laughs> hmm, I don't agree with this. Bedrolls are actually really commonly used. They're like the poor man's houses, pretty much, right now. They're very, very common, especially in group fights. I don't think bedrolls need to be changed, honestly. I, I, I don't think... This is redundant to me. Um, honestly, make bedrolls really good. <laughs> Better than they need to be. Right now, I think they're in a fine spot. SLC flag payments. <laughs> yeah, I, I think uh, SLC needs something uh, for capping the flag. They kind of don't really have any reason to cap the flag than just for the sake of it right now. I think they obviously need something to cap the flag for. That'd be cool. Cannons. <laughs> the one thing everyone hates is when they have a cannon spawn inside their house. Is that really what people hate about cannons? The fact that people can spawn them in a house? I don't know, it's not what I... I, I think people complain about the ineffectiveness against houses. Not sure about the other one, but yeah, okay. Yeah, eh. I don't know. I don't know how to fix that. Hold on, I'm just trying to think here. Time amount of snow in the house. Yeah, it has a certain amount of space to spawn a cannon. I mean, if you've got like a 6x6, six six, an 8x8, eight eight, a big house, you'll not have a problem with space at all. I don't even know if that would be a fix to cannons. I don't even know if cannons existing in a house, in a raid house. I don't even know if that's a problem, you know. Uh, crosshairs on cannons not working for players. Yep, that's certainly a problem. That needs to be fixed right away. Like, half the player base can't fucking use the crosshairs on cannons. That's insane. And then more ammo types. Oh man, great fucking idea. I'd love to see something like Grape Shot. 
Uh, some sort of shotgun round would be great. Maybe even like a like a flammable round, some sort of incendiary uh, that like sets a bunch of people on fire, kind of like a fire arrow, but like a shit ton of them. And then maybe some sort of like HE round, something explosive. That could blow up a larger area. That'd be really cool. And you'd need to use, I don't know what the fuck, but you need to use something special to do that one. That'd be awesome. I'd love to see that. And then compasses. Um, <laughs> he's right. Compasses are completely pointless because you've just got a little thing at the top of your screen that does exactly what the compass does. Hmm. I don't know what the fix for compasses is. This isn't the worst idea. Just having all the numbers on the sides. Yeah, that's not the worst idea. I think that could probably work. Although, the fucking thing on the top of your screen does the exact same thing, so I'm not sure how much it matters. I think compasses are just going to be kind of redundant and useless for a while. I don't know what they can do realistically. Unless, uh, whenever that naval update comes out, and you've got the water games, maybe on the water games, you'll take off the um, top compass UI element, and then only the compass itself will function. That'd be pretty cool. Uh, maps. Uh, maps are bugged. If they are bugged, there is no map. Um, maps come with a treasure chest. That would be a pretty good idea, actually. I, I would like to see that. Uh, although right now you do just get a marker on the top of your screen. Like, you get a marker for where the treasure chest is located. Not the exact chest, but, like, in general where the area of the chest is located. So that it kind of does that already, so it's not a super important thing. Have a working tutorial. And the tutorial works. It's not a great tutorial. It's not very interactive, but I mean, it works. It functions. It, it does what it's supposed to do. You just it, it kind of feels like a tutorial. You have to have someone like hold your hand through. Um, I think demonstrations would be a great idea. Like little videos that play. That would probably uh, that would uh, that would enact this idea in a proper way. You know, like have a tutorial. Like a little video that plays, a little clip that plays when a player is first introduced to a segment. And that would be much easier than some sort of elaborate animation work that the uh, like Fred or someone animates to display items or something. Yeah, I, I just, I'd honestly, if I were going to do that, I'd just have a little video play. Like a 30 second video to explain a thing. Uh, trading system, Ducat trading. We're getting into stuff I haven't read yet. Uh, much of the market is Ducat trading. Not really. It really isn't. Um, like, Ducat trades make up a very small percentage of all trades just because it's so easy to scam someone out of it. And then also, obviously, because until very recently, there have been very few things to trade on the Ducat market because it's basically just mats after all of the changes we've had. Um, mm -hmm. So the ability to invite people to party. Yeah, that's how you trade mats. Um... I don't know if that needs a fix. I brought this up to Ozzy six months, no, a year ago now. And he was like, yeah, it is what it is. You're opening yourself up to scamming. And so I don't even know if this needs a fix. I think it's like in a decent spot right now. And it gives people who don't have Ducats a chance to get Ducat mats, which is pretty good. Uh, wall and door hitting. Uh, <laughs> Paying it impossible. Yeah, I think if there was a way to make this impossible, it would have been done by now. I have no fucking idea how you do it. Like, you have to somehow invalidate hits that go through solid objects. And I, I just don't know how you'd fucking do that. Official faction. Um, da, 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 da. I think this isn't actually the worst idea. I've, I've sort of come around to it. It would have to be a native faction, realistically. There's no way in hell that anyone would be interested in, like, a French faction. Um, it just... it the, We've seen this borne out in all of the shitty TNF re-uploads. You know, people think they want a French faction to fight the British faction, but the problem is so much of it would be so similar that you get bored as fuck right away, right? It'd be a shiny new thing, and then we'd be dead in six months. You would need uh, an entirely new experience. You'd need a native faction with an entirely new experience to rival the HBC. The problem is you'd also need something to revitalize the HBC, because all those uh, HBC guys are going to go to the native faction when it first launches, and so you'll have a very underpowered system when that comes out. So you'll need to essentially reinvigorate the HBC at the same time as plopping in a new faction. But yeah, no, a French faction is not the way to go. It has to be something native-oriented, if anything. And it has to be very unique and separate from the HBC. Otherwise, it's going to fucking die. 
and we've seen that borne out time and time again with all the shitty, shitty TNF we uploads. All right, brooch ideas. <clears throat> There's so many fucking brooches. I don't even know if we need. I don't even know if we need more brooches. There's like literally twenty of them. Yeah. Uh, Duke exclusive. Yeah, no, I, I do think it's a good idea to have a lot more cosmetics that aren't Ducat exclusive. I think it's annoying that all the best cosmetics are Ducat. I, I think we need a lot of cosmetic variety that aren't Ducat specifically. And yeah, that'll come at a slight like loss in profits, I'm sure. But it also gives players a lot more versatility. And it's just a nice thing to do for people who aren't going to open Mommy Daddy's credit card. Or fucking open Mommy Daddy's wallet, you know? Better anti-cheat. Yeah, sure. They need to hire someone who can do that shit, though, because Fred doesn't have the time, and no one else has the experience. Um, Fred might not even have the experience. You know, this is... Uh, like, good security programmers are hard to come by, and they're very expensive, which is the chief reason we don't have some sort of great anti-cheat right now. It's because that shit's really expensive. You need a really good programmer. Um, well, you need a really good programmer who's really good at stopping the specific types of exploits people use to dupe and all that shit. Uh, yeah, so we'll see on that front. I hope they do eventually. Moose, Moose fights back. Uh, yeah, that's a pretty good idea. I think Moose should be able to fight back as well. They've got enough health. I think they probably should. Um, dialogue for proficiency. Uh, that's a cool idea. I think that could that could be a cool idea. I, I like that idea. Uh, Stonewood Dock for the SLC. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah, why the fuck not? Let's give HBC, throw him a bone. Drinking system. Eh. We've already got a hunger. It, it would feel a little bit redundant. It'd feel kind of tedious to have to do that and then also have to eat shit. Especially when the food system is so, like, unrefined right now. Because, like, the food system... Okay, I wouldn't say unrefined. I just think it's just bland. It's just lame. Because all the foods do the exact same thing. There's no, like, status effect from food unless it's poison. There's no special buffs you get from food. Um, there's no warmth you get from, like, food or anything. It's just kind of just, eh. Actually, no, I think you do get warmth from food in a weird way. You do actually get warmth from food, but it, it never really matters. Um, but it is cool you get warmth from food, though. I will admit, that is something I forgot about. You do get warmth from eating food, which is pretty cool. Uh, but apart from that, food is kind of just bland and lame. And so you'd need to put more into the system before you made, like, a water system as well. Food having effects. This is a pretty good idea. Not stamina or accuracy. That'd be bullshit. That'd be way too OP. But, like, little baby effects, you know? Like, uh, what would be an effect that would be, like, impactful enough to make a difference, but not too OP like these ones here? These ones are OP. You couldn't do those ones. Those ones, people would just pop before any, like, duel or any competitive thing. That'd be a terrible idea. Um, fuck, I don't even know. I, I'm sure there's a lot of things you could come up with, though, like immunity to certain things, right? But it, it couldn't be something like damage bonuses and shit. You know, it couldn't be something that overt, something that affects stamina, accuracy, all that shit. It couldn't be that. It'd have to be something, like, specific. Yeah, I don't know what it would be. Food should have effects, but they shouldn't be effects that mess with combat prowess. That'd be a terrible, terrible idea. Native houses. That'd be pretty cool, like a TP variant of some kind, or like a longhouse, whatever they did there. I, I think natives should be able to build shit, I just think they need to be able to build shit that's unique to natives. That'd be a great thing to expand, actually, having native uh, reskins of all the Kahlo building shit, and then, actually, no, 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 they'd have to be their own unique building block like, things. that You couldn't obviously build, like, a conventional colonial home as a native. You'd have to be able to uh, have the parts to build, like, the assorted longhouses and the teepees we see around the native spawn camps. So that'd be pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, you'd have to make all of their own unique props for that. That would be cool, though. More clothes. Uh, yeah, I think that can always be a good idea. I think natives especially need more clothes. That'd be a big thing. I think if you wanted to flesh out natives, my, my go-tos would be the bow fixes in my last video, uh, their unique building system, some sort of basic unique progression system, and then a native faction, and then native clothes, and then potentially blowguns, which I'll talk about in a bit. That'd be, that'd be really cool, and that'd probably revitalize native. Actually, no, that'd certainly revitalize native, and that, that would put it like relatively even ground wise <laughs> with Kahlo. And I think that'd be a decent idea. You know, because Native is suffering. It's hurting bad. Scabbards. Uh, this was, I think, my idea, actually. 
Uh, the idea is essentially it's like a belt, you know, it's a belt and it's got a essentially a sheath for whatever sword you've got on, and the sheath will uh, change depending on the sword equipped. So if you've got a dragoon or a masterwork equipped, your sheath is going to look a certain way. If you've got, I don't know, a rapier, a saber, a cutlass, a falchion, a backsword, it's going to look a different way. And that's the idea, essentially. You've got a scabbard that changes depending on the melee you have equipped. And obviously, it'll be, um, you know, maybe you could even have a regular and a ducat variant. That'd be pretty cool. Uh, yeah, that'd be really cool. I'd, I'd love to see that. I'd love to see scabbards of some kind. This was another one. Uh, digging up worms for dirt. You essentially, once you dig down too deep and you dig through the snow, you use your shovel on dirt and you can get like a worm every couple digs. I, I think that'd be a simple quality of life thing that'd make fishing easier. I'd love to see that because worms are super limited. There's only like two or three spots you can buy them anywhere. And so that'd be really useful to get worms more frequently because they're actually kind of hard to find if you don't know where to look. Water break. Mm. Oh, it's fucking horrible. Stupid hard water. Ugh. God damn. Fuck. It tastes like iron ore is dissolving in that fucking pipe. That's horrible. Alright, um, alloy furnaces. Jesus, speaking of iron ore. Um, adding more of them to the smithing and mining towns. Yeah, I, oh, I would, but that makes Smithtown on Cantermain less of a destination. You know, it's just sort of there if all you gotta do is waltz over to any alloy furnace in the game. So, here's what it is. Blowguns. I love... This is my idea. I've proposed this, like, four times over the last two years, and I think this is the best way to balance it. Essentially, it would be the colonist variant of a gun. So, it's a native exclusive secondary. The darts deal, like, 60-ish damage, just like fire arrows. So, it's over time, okay? And they have a quote-unquote poison effect, but it's not like the regular poison effect that lasts 20 minutes... It's a poison effect that apes the fire arrow damage effect. So it's basically just a fire arrow, but it's not literally catching you on fire. Um, it'll ragdoll the player for two seconds once it finishes its 60 damage. I don't... Looking back on it, I don't even know if that's a good idea. The ragdoll's probably redundant. Um, yeah, so this would be very inaccurate, like a shitty blunderbuss. It would have great, great bullet drop. Uh, a really long reload. That wouldn't be accurate, like, historically, but it doesn't really matter. It needs to be balanced. And so, yeah, it'd be super inaccurate, have a lot of bullet drop, a 12-second reload. So this is like a point-blank weapon. This is for blunder range for natives. It's, quote-unquote, fired instantly like guns, right? That, that's the whole idea. The blowgun is fired instantly like a gun, which gives natives a decent alternative to Kalos, who literally have guns, which do fire instantly. And that's the idea of a blowgun. So, essentially, a blunderbuss for natives that um, will ragdoll you and deal 60 damage. And then to make the blowgun ammunition, you need a special poison berry. That's a new thing for the game, hypothetically. And then a log. And then maybe there could be some sort of dart pouch. Maybe it'll only hold five rounds. I don't know. Um, and then you equip it, right? <laughs> and then, yeah, capacity of five. And I don't... <laughs> MLG put in the durability thing. I don't know if that's, like, going to impact anything. Because I can't imagine all that hard to make in this hypothetical. Uh, whatever. So th that's a cool idea. Although, yeah, I don't like the idea of non-repairable as the balance. I don't like that as the balancing feature. That, that feels just kind of silly. Not a huge fan of that idea. I feel like you can balance it without having to, like, hamstring it in a weird, awkward way that only is specific to that one. You know, I don't think one weapon should just be ridiculously easy to break, and then that's the defining characteristic of that weapon. Uh, Native Tribe Quest. Uh, okay, yeah, so this was, uh, you know, some sort of native progression system, right? So your first tier, uh, Native Totem Insurance for one day. That's, I mean, you get two of those for free, I'm not sure about that tier. Tier 2, the blowgun above. I'd prefer to make blowguns craftable, because they're not, like, good enough to make them ridiculously OP like a masterwork. And so I think it's just best to have them craftable, but it is what it is. And then we've got Tier 3. I'm not going to even try to pronounce that. That's the funny, spiky club from TNF. Here it's got, uh, essentially, two swings. Oh, no, two swing heavy melee. Yeah, so it's literally a 
free skin of the axe, the native axe, uh, and then it's got a really high bonk stick <laughs> knockdown ragdoll chance. I don't know. I mean, that could be balanced. I think it shouldn't do it. I don't think it should be as good as the... Well, it's the native axe isn't that good, is it? Um, I don't know. I don't know about that. I'd, I have to, I'd have to think on this one. Uh, weapon balancing requires a lot of thought, so I'd have to I'd have to get into that deeper. Uh, this could work, potentially. I think, honestly, just making it a saber reskin would be the safest bet, and then giving it an occasional chance to bonk a player, maybe 15%. It shouldn't be anywhere near 25%. That's really common. Uh, hair suggestions. Yeah, I mean, this is, like, easy to put down, but, like, realistically... Think about all the fucking hats in Northwind. There's like 50 hats in Northwind. How, like, do you know how hard it is to make a, a hair type that like fits with all of those hats? You know, or even fits with most of those hats. It's very hard. Um, emotes. I guess that'd be a Duke thing. No, that would be very TNF. Not that TNF had emotes, but like that like crappy pseudo historical bullshit where ugh. We've already had that with, like, the Cupid sets and the mate outfit. We don't need more of that. Uh, Governor's Mansion, JB? That could be cool. I'd like to see that. The problem is Kalos would be, like, essentially raiding that nonstop. Not literally attacking the thing, but they'd just be, like, running around the area. So I think it'd be better to put that in an HBC base of some kind. Yeah. Server region. Um... Uh, that'd be actually really useful, especially for factions who need to pick a good server with high low ping. That'd be very, very useful for those guys. Northwind image. Um, yeah, it is pretty low res. <laughs> they should probably fix that. Uh, chess and checkers. I proposed this like two years ago as well. This is a very good idea. I'd love to see that. You'd have to program that. That'd be kind of a bitch. But I think that'd be an awesome thing to put into JB. That'd be incredibly cool. Because look at how many people do just, like, casual dueling in JB. This would be such a good thing to implement. Just in JB, like, four to eight of these. You'd have, like, a chess hall in the inn. That'd be an incredibly good idea for people to pass the time in-game. I'd love, I would love to see this feature. This might be one of, if not the best features on this list. This is a great idea. <laughs> Fix the cursor. Fred put his little curse on the loading screen. I forgot about this. This is a great screenshot. <laughs> fireplaces. Um, yeah, I think fireplaces would be a good idea. It'd be kind of weird having that, like, somehow go up through other houses. Like, how the fuck would that, like, work with the chimney of the fireplace? I, I don't even know, because, like, the chimney would have to clip through multiple floors, essentially. I don't even... I don't know how you'd do it. You know, you'd have to have some, like... I don't even know, because, like, think about it. Let's say you put down... Uh, a fireplace in your four-story house, you know, right? That that fireplace would have to be, like, what, four, five stories tall? Let's say you put that fireplace down as, like, one of the first props in your brand-new one-story house. Are you just going to have a five-tall fireplace? It's going to look retarded. It's going to look like a smokestack. You've got a factory now, you know? I, I don't even know how they do that. It, it would have to scale with the height of the house, I guess, which could be pretty interesting. I mean, assuming they even have a smokestack at all, or a chimney at all, you know? Depends. Hammocks! I mean, that'd be cool. We don't live on a Caribbean island, but that'd be kind of cool. God, this water's gonna make me kill myself. <coughs> Puck! Puck! Alright. Stone Foundations. This one was proposed forever ago. I actually quite like this idea. This would be a very cool thing to have. This, along with trapdoors, would be incredibly cool to have for houses. Farming tiers and more quests. Um, what is farming tiers? As in, like, tiered unlocks for farming? Is there a farming store? There's a guy who sells seeds, but there's no farming store, is there? I don't think so. Yeah, we need a farming store before that. Um, that could be cool, though, like farming tasks. Or farming quests. Tark on the brain. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. I'd like to see that. Farming should probably be made a little more interesting first, though. Because it's kind of a lame gameplay loop. It's on par with fishing, but fishing at least got more interesting with the last updates, where we uh, have a special way. You, essentially, you cast your line where you see a fish land, and you'll get that fish. And so that it's more interactive now, which is great. Uh, farming, not so much. Farming still pretty lame. More fence options. Yep, that's actually a pretty good idea. I'd like to see more fence options. 
Uh, yes, wood signs for shops and for houses. That'd be great. Uh, it would be open to all sort of chat abuse, but that would be really cool to see. I'd love to see that. And with that, we're at 52, which is space by space by space by space. Holy shit, that's a lot of returns. Yeah, so that's 52. Jesus, that was a lot of suggestions. Some of these were very good, especially the checkers slash chess suggestion. That one is probably the best suggestion here. Chess is pretty complicated to code, I think. If you're going to, like, plop a little thing into the game, that's going to be a lot of animations to program. So I think checkers would probably be a safer bet. Or, a fuck, I don't know, even a primitive version of Connect 4. Not Tic-Tac-Toe. Tic-Tac-Toe is a solved game. That'd be boring as shit. But, um, I don't know, some sort of easy game. Maybe even Sudoku. I don't know. Something like that, where you could just, like, implement, like, pretty simple board game logic, and then you'd just be set. You know, I'd love to see that. That'd be a really cool idea. Yeah, there's some definitely standout ideas in this, though. I would love to see the chess checkers idea, though. That's my favorite of the list. <laughs> Jesus, that was a lot. Thank you all for watching. This has been crazy. Some of these I really hope get into the game. Some of these not so much. Wow. Props to MLG for making this list. Let's hope Laz likes what he sees. Let's hope we get some of these ideas in the game. I'll see you all next time. Thank you for watching.